Hey there nation and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Way of the Underhive. This series is dedicated to helping brand new players to Nicaragua build their starting rosters and learn more about the game mechanics of their favorite gangs. And on this episode we will be discussing the Ironhead Squat Prospectors. Uh, this is the brand new gang that was released with the book of the Outlands for Nicaragua Ash Wastes. And there's a lot of material going on about in that book and we're going to help you guys kind of decipher some of it and kind of help you with some information about their strengths or weaknesses the fighters that they have the play style that they use and provide you critical information that you can use in your campaign and at the same time we'll also give you three example uh, starting rosters that we would suggest that you use in your future campaigns both for uh, any campaign that takes place in the underhive of high primus or out in the expanses of the ash wastes so that being said let's get this video on a roll all right, so let's go ahead and talk about the strengths of the Ironhead Squat Prospectors. First of all, they have toughness for standard for all their fighters, which makes them a little bit more resilient and also less likely to happen for them to be injured or to be taken out of action uh, because of attacks. Also at the same time, almost every single fighter in this list also has shooting skills as their primary, which does anyone know, anyone fighting against a Vansar or a Delac gang, it could be very, very deadly to go up against those gangs, especially when you have those shooting skills. At the same time, you could also purchase Carapace Armor for the entirety of the gang as well. Uh, every fighter can be equipped with like Carapace Armor as well, so it makes them extremely resilient, especially when you can buy things like field armor, like displacer fields and refractor fields and all those kind of things that also help your guys out, you know, survive a little bit more as well. Another thing they also have too is that almost all of their shooting weapons have rapid fire of some sort so these guys are definitely not slouches especially when it comes to guns uh, they'll be able to blast people out of the water with the number of rapid fire abilities they have for example the Ironhead stub gun which is the uh, sidearm that most uh, gangers use in uh, Nicaragua has rapid fire on it so that kind of tells you something about when it comes to this gang as well just to give you guys another example as well, they have a special rule called Firestorm on their Flamer template weapons. And what that basically is meant is, mean is when you roll the uh, the rapid fire dice, when you fire your Flamer, whatever number of hits pop up on that die is the number of times you hit the target as well with your Flaming attack. So these guys are no joke whatsoever. So because of that, they have some very powerful close combat as well as shooting weapons. They have access to very excellent war gear and equipment. So these guys have all those in spades. Now we move on to the weaknesses, and as you probably guess, uh, the Ironhead Prospectors are actually very, very points heavy. Their fighters are actually not that bad. The cost of fighters is actually just like any other gang. It's the weapons and equipment that they equip them with that's going to be the problem for that. For example, like we talked about that Ironhead stub gun, for most gangs it costs about 5 credits to purchase one of those, it costs uh, 10 for your Ironhead Prospector. So imagine you know, point values being doubled for the most part for most of their weapons, and that kind of gives you an idea of what the costs are going to in your gang. So because of that, your Iron Head uh, Prospectors will always be outnumbered. However, though, they will never be outgunned. They'll be able to hold their own with their own firepower and everything else. Another problem that they have as well is because these are squads, which are basically dwarves, uh, they actually suffer from slow movement and low initiative values. Uh, the Pretty much the entire gang has uh, four movement as their standard, as well as a five of initiative. So, and because that we are now going into the Ash Waste, doing things like boarding enemy vehicles and like jumping onto vehicles and stuff are really initiative heavy. And so the Ironhead squats are quite, definitely suffering when it comes to that, uh, especially if they're doing initiative tests. But there's some ways around that, and we'll talk about that later on when we get to our army lists. At the same time, the box set that you guys can purchase for the Ironhead squats, they do not have all the weapon options available in that box set, which is kind of understandable and on par for what Game Workshop usually does. I imagine there'll be future releases from Forge Rule where they actually have, like, you know, your upgrade packs where they give you different weapon options that were not in original box sets. So for those of you guys who are concerned about cost, that could be uh, a problem there. However, just to give you guys some heads up, two of my lists do not require any upgrade uh, boxes like that. Um, they're going to be using everything that comes with the starter set. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in detail when we actually get to our army lists. And lastly, I know this is kind of like a minor point, but I've been talking to a lot of my viewers, and a lot of them feel that the aesthetic of the Ironhead squats, um, they don't care for They say they look like eggs and stuff like that. They look like little trash cans with arms and legs so a lot of people don't like the aesthetic of these guys however though this doesn't bother me at all and the reason why is because you could always convert your own if you want to you could also use Kraedron Overlords as well uh, for those of you who play Warhammer Age of Sigmar if you have Kraedron Overlords you have guns and stuff um, this is gonna be a nice little list because you know you could actually proxy your Kraedron Overlords as um, 
as I hit squats, and that's exactly what I'm going to do for uh, for my gaming group. One of my players is going to do exactly that. So it's not much of a big issue for most people, but for, for me and my gaming group. I know for some people it is an issue, but uh, those are pretty much the only weaknesses, though, that a Iron Head Prospector gang has. So now that we're done talking about their strengths and weaknesses, let's go and talk about the unique skill set that they have for this gang. Alright, so when it comes to their skill set, they have a brand new skill set that's unique to this game called Wisdom of the Ancients. And based on what I've seen from the rules, it's kind of like a combination of both Savant as well as Brawn. It's the same as Savant because some of these actually give you additional credits for whenever you complete scenarios. For example, one's called Where There's Scrap, There's a Way, and you actually earn D6 times 10 credit for every enemy vehicle you manage to wreck while in the Ashways. At the same time, there's another one called There's Always Another Secret, where you earn additional D6 times 10 credits for loot caskets when you capture those as well. And at the same time, you also have things like um, Dependable Like Ken, we'll talk about a little bit more detail here in a second. Things like how it's like brought is that you have one that's called Nobody Pushes Ken Around, which means you never have to worry about knockback effects for your fighters. So it's actually kind of interesting as well. And like I said before, it's kind of also focused on the equipment that you have because you can get a lot of money from the things that you do on the battlefield. Or you could do things like another one called Chemical Bonds of a Break, which means your fighter can take Kims twice. Uh, before being removed from the fighter cards. So if you're really into Kims, uh, your dwarves can actually do that, for example, for your squats. But the shining one that I think is the best one I actually on here is called Dependable Like Kin. And uh, this is what the rule says. It says, this fighter ignores the unstable trait on any weapon that they are equipped with and may reroll any ammo checks that they take. So with all these rapid fire dice that your gang has access to, you're gonna probably roll up that ammo check quite often. And so because it, you can reroll them, so which is really, really nice as well. At the best same time, you could also get some really heavy plasma weapons on these guys too, because they can also buy it from the trading post. So if you can get some plasma weapons on your on your uh, drill masters, which are the guys who get this uh, skill as a primary, uh, they could fire all those really heavy weapon, uh, plasma weapons and not have to worry about running out of ammo, which is really cool. And plus, they can also reroll ammo checks, which is also really nice as well. So Wisdom of the Agents is a really powerful skill set. Uh, I think that Dependable Like Ken kind of outshines the other ones, but that's just me personally. So now that we're done talking about the skills that the Ironhead Prospectors have, let's go ahead and talk about their individual fighters. All right, first of all, let's go and talk about the Iron Head Squat Prospector Charter Master, which are the leaders of the gang. These fighters cost 115 credits, and let's talk about their stats real quick. So they have four movement, three plus weapon skill plus a skill, three strength, four toughness, three wounds, five initiative, two attacks, five leadership, five cool, five willpower, as well as six intelligence. And when it comes to their skills, they have shooting, leadership, and brawn as their primaries with combat, savant, as well as wisdom of the ancients as their secondaries. So when it comes to these guys, these Charter Masters, Masters are actually cool. They have three wounds apiece. The only other gang that actually has that for their leaders are the Orlocks. But unlike the Orlock leader, these guys have toughness four. So these guys are not going down very easily. It's going to take quite a bit to actually bring down your Charter Master for your gang. So with that being said, they're also very versatile as well. Because they're good weapon skill, ballistic skill, they can do shooting or combat equally well. And when you combine the number of attacks they have, that's really going to be really helping them out as well. And because of that, it makes it very, very versatile. So if you want to have a combat kit it out, Charter Master, you can do that. If you want one that does heavy weapon shooting or long range shooting, you can do that too. Or if you want to have a little combination of both and do a leadership support, you could also do that as well because they're very, very versatile. This kind of depends on what your play style is. And so because of that, these are actually one of the most powerful fighters that are out there right now. And like I said, the only handicap this guy actually has is his low movement as well as his horrible initiative value. But he does have access to excellent weapons as well as gear that he could use to actually cause a lot of harm uh, for your opponents as well. So Charger Masters, Definitely really, really awesome in this edition. All right, so up next you have your Ironhead Squat Prospector's Drill Master, which is your guys' champions on this one. And so far with this book, you only have one type of champion right now. I'm not sure if they're going to add additional fighters and, like, um, like different kind of champions you can choose from in the future releases coming out for the Ash Wasteland. But for right now, though, you only have the one champion. So this guy costs you 85 credits. Uh, once again, movement four. They have four weapon skill, three ballistic skill, three strength, and four toughness, two wounds, five initiatives, two attacks. They have six leadership, cool will, and seven intelligence as well. So when it comes to this guy, when it comes to his skills, uh, his skill primaries are Wisdom of the Ancients, that's a primary, and Brawn is a primary as well, with Ferocity, Leadership, as well as Shooting as your secondaries. So when it comes to your Drill Master, even though, uh, even though they're actually better at shooting because they got that 3-up Ballista skill, 
their skills are more for combat, especially with Bronn uh, being in there as well. Now, of course, you could, of course, ignore those Bronn skills and take Wizard of the Ancients, which I would recommend doing because these guys are actually really good at long-range shooting, and that's what I recommend as well. They also have access to excellent equipment too, things like the Iron Head Flamer, which is a rapid-fire flaming weapon. You also got a Iron Head Melted Gun, which is a rapid-fire Melted Gun, which is terrifying. The Iron Head Heavy uh, Flamer, rapid-fire. Uh, Rapid Fire Flamer. You also got your Iron Head Heavy Stubber, which actually lets you, I believe, lets you fire three Rapid Fire dice for that bad boy. So these guys have some really good access to equipment as well as weaponry as well. So like I said before, you want to do more of the long range shooting with these guys, especially when you pair up with Windsorism of the Ancients, because some of your weapons have some really high ammo rolls that you can reroll, and you can also ignore your unstable effects if you get plasma weapons for these guys later on. All right, so up next are the Drillkin. These are your gangers for your uh, Prospector gang. These guys cost 50 credits apiece. So let's talk about their stats real quick. So their stats are movement 4, 4 plus weapon skill, plus a skill, 3 strength, 4 toughness. They have 1 wound, 5 plus for initiative, 1 attack, 7 for leadership, 6 for cool and willpower, and 7 for intelligence. For their primary skills, they have brawn and shooting, and for their secondary skills, they have combat as well as cunning. So... Let's talk about these guys real quick. So like I said before, these are gang level fighters. These are going to be the meat potatoes of your guys' gang. And these guys are wonderful generalists. And they're also very versatile as well. The type of weapons they can equip themselves with in terms of close combat weapons as well as range weaponry. They have a plethora of different options you can kit these guys out to to fulfill any number of roles that you could possibly imagine. And the nice thing about these guys is because they have that 4 of toughness, it's going to make them a little more resilient as well. So you can actually kit these guys out for combat. And they do have bronze skills to help them out with that as well. However, though, I feel that shooting is probably the way you want to go with this game because shooting has so much rapid fire for these guys. However, though, their shooting options are kind of expensive. The Iron Head Auto Gun, for example, costs 25 credits. However, you get two shots with your rapid fire. You get two rapid fire dice for that weapon. Or you can actually go up to Iron Head Bolt Gun, which gives you 95 credits. So you could do that with their comes with their long range weapons. Now, for their close range weapons, for example, uh, the Iron Head Auto Pistol costs 20, uh, the Iron Head Stub Gun costs 10, the Bolt Pistol costs 45. But the nice thing about these guys is that you also can take Specialists, and the Specialists can take the Iron Head Flamer and the Iron Head Melted Gun. I feel that the Melted Gun is probably the deadliest of the two because it has Rapid Fire ability. And given that the fact that your enemies are now driving vehicles to deal with those higher toughness of the vehicles, that uh, Rapid Fire Melted Gun is really going to cause some problems for enemies as well. So that pretty much is my take when it comes to your Drillkins. Alright, so lastly we have your GB level fighters. These are your diggers, is what these guys are called. Uh, let's talk about their stats real quick. So a digger GB level fighter has a 5 inch movement. They have 5 weapon skill, 5 plus skill. They have 3 strength, 4 toughness, 1 wound, 4 initiative, 1 attack. 8 leadership, 7 cool, 6 willpower, as well as 7 intelligence. Uh, for their skills, their primary is shooting, with brawn and combat being secondary. Now, this is going to sound kind of weird, even though I'm talking about juvie level fighters here, but they actually have exo equipment, all right? Their stats are not that great. However, when it comes to their combat and shooting stats, because they're only 5 up, what they do excel at, though, is their movement, as well as their initiative. Their initiative 4, so that makes them basic initiative anybody. And they also move at 5, which kind of puts them on the same par as other fighters, but they have that 4 of toughness, which is really going to help them to survive as well. So in my opinion, you want to keep these guys kind of basic when it comes to the digger. Uh, the first thing you want to do, of course, is you want to equip these guys for close combat. Now you might be thinking, Commander Chief says it's kind of weird to put these guys for close combat with their weapon skill 5. What you want to use these guys for, especially if you're going in the Ash Waste, is to use these guys for boarding actions, alright? Juvie level fighters are considered expendable because they don't cost as much as their other counterparts. And you know, and you want to keep the equipment for these guys kind of low. So my suggestion for you is to just give them some kind of light armor of some sort if you want to. I would just stick with something like an Iron Head Stub Gun because it's a rapid fire stub gun. You throw dum dum bullets on it, it gives it a strength for hit in close combat. Give another weapon to fight with. You could use a fighting knife if you want to, or a circular stone saw, which is one of their power pack weapons they can use for 25 credits. But I would suggest probably using the knife only, or just give another pistol in that case. That way they can do double shooting. Um, since they have pistols, they got to close in with that short range anyway, which is going to help them with their ballista skill. And at the same time, that high strength from that strength forge is really going to do a good job of actually hurting your opponents as well. Another thing I also recommend putting on your digger characters is to use smoke grenades. Smoke grenades only cost 15 credits for these guys, so you want to pop smoke, so that way you can create... Um, 
smoke screen so that way your opponents really can't shoot at you from range stuff like that you could also protect your vehicle from being shot at and that's my suggestion for these guys use them as smoke grenade toting close combat boarding action type characters and if they survive then you can give them better weapons as well now on a side note about these uh the digger characters which makes them also really cool too though is that they could also take auto guns and they also could take bolt guns so that's another thing that's neat about these guys so they can do longer range combat if you want to however though because of their not so great ballistic skill, I would suggest doing close combat. That toughness is really going to help them to survive that. And the last fighter we're going to talk about real quick is the gearhead. These guys are your crew members for your vehicles, and that's why I'm using the picture of the Zamboni riding uh, hovercraft guy that was released from the Leagues of Botan. Uh, these guys are your crew for your vehicles. These guys cost 40 credits. They have a ballistic skill of 4+, plus, leadership of 7+, plus, cool of 6+, plus, will of 6+, plus, as well as 7 of uh, seven plus for intelligence for these guys as well. Now, when it comes to these guys, these are your guys' are dedicated crew for your vehicles, so that part is kind of nice. Their skill access is driving and shooting for primary with savant and leadership for their secondaries and of course just like any other gang that has dedicated crew you want to actually just keep them on the vehicle at all times because they have to stay with it in my opinion if you're going to take a vehicle uh, i would suggest trying to get at least two of these guys if you possibly can and the reason why is because one will definitely be the dedicated driver for the vehicle but the second crew member will operate weapons on the vehicle as well and i actually have a very specific vehicle i'd actually recommend that you use because of the weapon equipment that it has but we'll talk about that here in a little bit when we actually get to the building list so if you can get those two characters to occupy your vehicle the rest of your gang can just do boarding actions and stuff like that as well the nice part about it is that you don't necessarily need to have miniatures for your gearheads because these guys are on the vehicle at all times so you can just say they're inside the vehicle while you just purchase miniatures for the guys who actually disembark your vehicle as well and that's the way i would do it because i'm a massive chief skate and i think this will help you save money as well so those are the gearheads uh for your gang so now that we're done talking about your fighters let's go and talk about your brutes all right so when it comes to your brutes you have the vertijan exo driller i believe is how you actually pronounce the vertijan name i believe it's uh, Ver uh vertijan there we go exo driller i believe that's how you actually say it um, these are your unique uh, brutes for your game. They cost 250 credits a piece, and you can get two of these guys, up to two of these guys, in your gang as well. And these guys are actually quite beast mode. So let's talk about them real quick. So when it comes to their stats, they have movement characteristic of four inches, four weapon skill, three ballista skill, four strength, five toughness, three wounds. They have five initiative, two attacks, seven leadership, six cool, six willpower, as well as seven intelligence. And their skill access that they have are uh, primary is ferocity for these guys, and they have bronze shooting as well as wisdom of the ancients as their secondaries so the iron head squat prospector exo driller is armed with a vartion fist a vartion heavy flamer as well as a seismic crusher and of course they're also equipped with light carapace armor you could also replace the heavy flamer with a heavy bolter if you want to for 50 additional credits but it's pretty much up to you in my opinion the flamer as well as heavy bolter are both equally good um, I would suggest that whatever you're more comfortable with, if you want to create a more assault, close combat oriented exo driller, then stick with the flamer. If you want to go for a long range shooting heavy support one, then go with the heavy bolter. It's pretty much up to you when it comes to that one as well. Now, when they actually have special rules on this one, they actually have a couple of them. One's called Guard Exo Suit. It says, if the scenario being played requires a controlling game to deploy sentries, an Ironhead Squat Prospector Exo Driller can always be deployed as an additional sentry, regardless of crew selection rules. This can take a starting crew above the maximum size. So, yes, that is correct. If you're in a situation when you're a sentry, and you only have X a number of amount of fighters you can have for your sentries, you can automatically take the Vertion Exit Driller as one of your sentries and take it above your starting crew size. And that's really, really awesome because these guys are beast mode, so it's going to help you out survive a little bit better in any situation where you might find yourself pulling uh, guard duty on one of your scenarios. Another one they have on here as well is called uh, Sensor Sweep, is what it's called, and basically they have, uh, when it comes to the visibility rules for the battlefield conditions, you actually can extend that by three inches because it represents the fact that you have like infrared goggles and sensors and stuff on this exosuit as well. And they automatically also come with a nobody pushes kin around skill, which means they never have to worry about being knocked back at all. So these guys are extremely powerful as well. In fact, I highly recommend you get one of these guys, if not both of these guys, as quick as you can. They got good close combat, they got good weapon attacks with that seismic cannon, as well as the flamer or the uh, bolter. So uh, definitely go for these guys as well. So now that we're done talking about your brutes and all your fighters, let's go ahead and get to the army lists. 
All right, so let's go ahead and talk about army list number one. I call this a cheapskate list, and this list is actually tailored towards players who are actually going to be sticking around in the Underhive who are not planning on actually leaving the Underhive and going out to the Ash Wastes. So I want to make sure I get that clear off the bat. You could use this in the Ash Wastes if you want to, but this is more designed for fighting in the normal uh, Dominion campaigns in Necromunda. This list is going to cost you 995 credits, and this is what it consists of. First of all, your Charter Master is going to cost you 245 credits. This fighter is going to have Mesh Armor, a Power Hammer, as well as a Stone Burner, as well as overseer so this guy's cleared it out for close combat for the most part and you want to use that overseer ability to spam uh, some other things later on now you also have a drill master that character is going to cost you 315 credits this person's got mesh armor and iron head heavy stubber a suspenser so that way they can use basic actions to fire that heavy weapon an iron head stub gun with dum dum rounds as well as dependable like kin skill you can also have three drill kin drill kin number one costs you 90 credits he's got mesh armor an iron head auto gun an iron head stub gun with dum dum rounds and drill kin number two is equipped exactly the same way and costs exactly 90 credits as well now drill kin number three is going to cost you 105 credits this character's got mesh armor twin iron head auto pistols as well as the specialist rule um this guy doesn't actually have a special weapon with them right now just because you're going to try to purchase that later on as time goes on and then finally you have two diggers in this group digger number one and digger number two they're both equipped exactly the same both of them will cost 75 credits both have flak armor iron head stub guns with dum dum rounds as well as smoke grenades now to get this list all you need is one box of iron head squad prospectors the nice thing about this is that this list is everything straight from the box set so there's no proxying necessary or need to purchase upgrade kits if you don't want to everything in the box set is just you see uh, is ready to go right off the bat and like i said before this list is not designed for players going into the ash waste it's more for guys sticking around the underhive as well now your game will consist of two fire teams you have a support fire team and a salt fire team your support fire team will consist of your charter master your drill master as well as drill kin number one and two their job is to use long range fire to suppress the enemy at the distance uh, so use the Charter Master's Overseer ability, and what you're going to do is you're going to double activate the Drill Master to fire that Heavy Stubber twice. So that way you can keep on getting those shots off and put out all that lead. At the same time, the Divinable like Kin should prevent the weapon from failing ammo checks for your Drill Master, so that should really help you out as well. At the same time, your other two um, uh, Drill Kin have uh, two Rapid Fire dice, and that's going to really help them also put out that Long Range Fire to keep your enemy suppressed. Now your assault team will consist of drill kid number three and digger number one and digger number two. And their job is to close the distance and to flank the enemy as well. Your diggers can use smoke grenades to cover your gang's advance across the battlefield. So don't have to worry about being shot because you got that slower movement value. And later on you can purchase a special weapon for the drill kid number three when you get enough credits. I suggest going with the template firing flamer in this situation if you decide to do that. If you're staying in the underhive because a lot of cover stuff like that will be ignored with the template blast. And having that rapid fire ability with that flamer is going to be really really nice to help you out with that one and that pretty much makes up list number one the cheapskate list for those of you guys who are staying in the underhive all right so let's go to list number two and once again i call this the ash waste cheapskate list and the reason why is because everything you're going to need here are just coming from your box sets as well from the starter box set for your iron Age prospectors and this list is for those of you who are going out into the ash waste this one's going to cost you a thousand credits i apologize not a thousand credits it's going to cost you 1400 credits Let's so we'll talk about that real quick. So first of all, you have your Charter Master. It's going to cost 245 credits. This person is more designed for close combat with the Mesh Armor, Power Hammer, Stone Burner, as well as Overseer ability. So you're taking those close combat weapons to protect them, but you're really going to spam that Overseer ability. Now, Drill Master number one is going to cost you 115 credits. This person's got a Mesh Armor, Iron Head Stub Gun with Dum Dum Rounds, and Dependable Light Kin. Now, you might be wondering why doesn't he not have better weapons, and the reason why is because he's going to stick with the vehicle. We'll talk about that in a second. Now we have Drill Master number 2 is going to cost you 315 credits. This guy's got mesh armor, iron head heavy stubber with suspenser, iron head stub gun with dum dum rounds, as well as dependable like kin. We then have two Drill Kin. Drill Kin number 1 and 2 are equipped exactly the same at 90 credits a piece with mesh armor, iron head auto gun, as well as iron head stub gun with dum dum rounds. And you also have two diggers. They're both also 75 credits a piece, both equipped exactly the same with flak armor, armor. Iron head stub guns with dum dum rounds as well as smoke grenades. And then finally, you have a gearhead who's going to cost you 185 credits. The, uh, this guy's going to be the driver for the Goliath rock grinder truck that you're going to purchase for your gang, as well as equipped with twin linked auto cannons. So you can see where the weapons are going on this one. Tire claws help you with handling, as well as headlights help you with visibility. Now, to get this list, you'll need to buy one box of Iron Head Squat Prospectors and one Goliath rock grinder truck. 
or some vehicle equivalent to one, depending on what you want to do. Now, everything in this list is straight from the box set, so there's no proxy necessary or need to purchase upgrade kits for your fighters. And at the same time, everything that you need from a rock grinder truck that you'd buy from Games Workshop for your Gene Steeler Colts will have everything you need in there as well. Now, this list is good for players who are going out to the Ash Waste, and it consists of three fire teams. You have two support fire teams and one assault fire team. Now, support fire team number one consists of your charter master, your drill master number one, as well as your gearhead. Now, this group remains with the vehicle. You're going to spam the charter master's overseer ability on drill master number one to fire those twin linked auto cannons on vehicles on the vehicle you're gonna fire those twice all right now the dependable like kin skill should prevent the auto cannons from failing ammo checks and for anybody who's actually watched our um our uh, series anarchy road uh you've been noticing lately that a lot of the gangs and players of my gang have been using auto cannons those things are strength seven rapid fire weapons and they tear vehicles apart in our in our in our campaign now the vehicles in the official rules are not as tough as the ones that we've been playing with in our group so these are going to tear apart vehicles all the time so that's the reason why you want to keep you at drill master one that's why he doesn't have any weapons because he's operating those twin auto linked uh, twin linked auto cannons the entire time so you want to do that as well at the same time you can also the drill master do a group act Activation where the gearhead can move and then of course the um, drill master can shoot as well so that part's really sim uh, really awesome now support fire team number two will consist of drill master number two drill kit number one and drill kit number two this group can dismount the vehicle and fight on foot if they want to their job is to use long range fire to suppress your enemy at a distance the drill master will fire that heavy stubber and that dependable like kin ability should prevent the weapon from failing ammo checks at the same time your drill kin fighters will be able to fire from a distance because they get two rapid fire dice for those auto guns so very very deadly combination there now assault team number uh, your assault team will consist of drill kin number three as well as digger number one as well as digger number two and uh uh, these guys are actually pretty simple. This group can dismount from the vehicle as well as fight on foot, and their job is to close the distance and to flank the enemy. Diggers can also use their smoke grenades to cover the gang's advance across the battlefield. And like I said before, you can also purchase um, heavy weapons or special weapons for drill kit number three when you get enough time and uh, enough credits in order to help out your gang as well. And that pretty much makes up the uh, cheapskate list that I recommend you use for the Ash Wastes. And then finally, we have list number three. I call this the KRA Drone Overlords backslash a Thundrix Profiteers list. And once again, this is going to cost you 1,400 credits as well. And this list, of course, is designed for you to go back into the Ash Waste on this one as well. So let's go and talk about this. So first of all, your Charter Master will cost you 295 credits. This character is armed with Mesh Armor and Iron Head Flamer, Iron Head Stug Gun and Dumb Dumb Rounds, as well as the Fast Shot ability. Your Drill Master will cost you 195 credits. This fighter will have Mesh Armor, Power Pick, as well as an Iron Head Stug Gun and Dumb Dumb Rounds, a Grab Shoot, as well as stubborn to the end now you'll have three drillkins drillkin number one costs 235 credits this fighter has mesh armor and iron head melt a gun and iron head stub gun with dumb dumb rounds and the specialist upgrade drillkin number two will cost you 115 credits this fighter will have mesh armor iron head auto gun with telescopic sight and an iron head stub gun with dumb dumb rounds and drillkin number three will cost you 115 credits this fighter has mesh armor and iron head stub gun with dumb dumb rounds as well as photo goggles and then lastly you'll also have a gearhead this guy will cost you 455 445 credits this fighter will have a rock grinder truck that's equipped with twin linked auto cannons a rock grinder ram headlights boarding ramp as well as redundant drive systems so for this list you'll need to buy one box creator drawn overlords or you could also use thunderx profiteers if you have that from uh Warhammer underworlds and one goliath rock grinder or vehicle that is equivalent to so now this list is actually a much more aggressive list and is designed around boarding enemy vehicles and also attacking them as well and that's the reason why this list is kind of geared the way it is now this gang is also very heavy in shooting with special heavy weapons, but has enough close quarters of weapons to also assault and abort enemy vehicles as well. Now, the only real concern you have on this one is the gang's terrible five-up initiative score in order to abort enemy vehicles, but the Rock Grinder does have a boarding ramp, which should help with this by adding plus one to their initiative test. So, it makes them initiative four. Not great, I know, but it's a 50-50 chance, and that's the thing you want to keep that in mind. So let's talk about your guys' uh, fire teams on this one. You guys will basically have three fire teams on this one. One support fire team and two assault fire teams. Support fire team number one will consist of drillkin number three as well as your gearhead and the goliath rock grinder. Now the crew remains of the vehicle and the team engages enemy vehicles and provides supporting fire with the twin linked auto guns. At the same time they also get buffs to enemy boarding enemy vehicles and you can also take glancing blows to your drive system and still be okay. At the same time, you also have that wonderful right grinder ram that allows you to engage enemies and ram them and also cause some problems as well. Like I said, a very aggressive build with this list. 
Now, Assault Team number one consists of your Charter Master as well as Drill Kit number one. This team can dismount or assault from the vehicle using boarding actions. They use the Charter Master's fast shot ability to deal with the enemy vehicle crews by firing that flamer twice directly into it. Hopefully, you can set some crew fire guys on fire. They bail out the vehicle, and you just finish those guys off as well. At the same time, you're going to use Drillkin number one. He's going to use that melt gun, that rapid fire melt gun, to do damage to the enemy vehicle as well. And uh, that melt gun is just going to chew him up, especially with that high rate of fire that you get from that rapid fire die. And then last, we have assault team number two. That's going to consist of your drill master as well as Drillkin number two. This team can dismount or assault from the vehicle as well. The drill master is designed for close combat, boarding enemy vehicles, and engaging with his power pick as well as his stub gun. Now, if he should fall off or fail to do the boarding action, he does have a grass shoot to help him kind of survive. So that's the reason why he has that. As well as drill kit number two, he's actually got engaged targets at or in close range with that auto gun as well. And in my suggestion, if you get future fighters, equip these guys with grav shoots, that way they can survive in case they fail with their boarding actions. And that's what I like to call the Courageon Overlord Thundrix Profiteers list. All right, you guys, so in conclusion, the Ironhead Squat Prospectors are a very exciting gang with some really powerful options. I can definitely see some really cool potential with these guys as well. Now, granted, your initiative and your speed are going to be an issue when it comes to your movement characteristic, but at the same time, though, you don't really need to be fast if you're shooting at your enemies at range and destroying them before they even get to you. And the only thing, real reason you're going to need about worry about the initiative and the speed for these guys is, of course, if you're going out in the ash waste, you're trying to do boarding actions. But, like I said, this is a relatively new gang to the system, and I'm excited to see what else comes out for this gang in the future as well. I can imagine some uh, different materials coming out for these guys in future releases for the ash waste. For example, these guys have no prospect level fighters. I imagine they'll probably put out something like that in the future for these guys, which would be kind of cool to see. So I'm really excited to see exactly what Games Workshop does with these guys later on, and of course, you can just grow with this gang as more material becomes available in the future. So that's going to do for those of you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us, as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's going to do for those of you guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, and stay classy.